Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What are we doing today? Today it's time to talk about the caster that's going to be coming up at day roll. Not to be confused with the Castoria that is that showed up after maintenance, or the Tamamo that showed up yesterday who was also a caster, who uh, I also didn't think that they were going to release for our side, but hey, she did release for our side. No, we're here to talk about... Um, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, the adult form of Leonardo da Vinci, and Marie Castor, the other caster on here. That's gonna be today's video. <laughs> Even though no one's like, you know who's summoning for this? My brother is summoning on this. And if you summon on this, feel free to tell me. I even I'm a little bit tempted to summon for this to see if I can get my final MP5 copy of uh, Marie Antoinette Castor. Alright, let's just go right into it. Should you actually summon for this banner? No, probably not. If you, if you don't have Castoria, you should probably go summon on Castoria. But if you don't have Castoria and you love Leonardo da Vinci, how is she? I'll tell you right after I talk about Marie Antoinette Castor. So she's first. Um, What does Marie Antoinette Castor do? Uh, very good question. I have her MP4 and I can tell you she does usually a fat load of nothing. But let's see what she actually does right here. Uh, she has one quick card, three arts cards, one buster. Three hits, uh, three quick hits, five arts hits, and one buster hit, and four extra hits. Her first skill is Beach Flower A+, increases party's attack for three turns, and then increases critical star generation rate for male allies for three turns. Her second skill is the Sunflower's Brilliance A, gains critical stars every turn for three turns, and then recovers on HP every turn for three turns. 10 star regen, and then HP regen is 1000, that's a cooldown of 7. Her third skill is the Princess of the Loveliness Ocean A, increases, uh, increase, uh, grants self invincibility for 3 attacks, and then increase on debuff resistance for 3 turns, 50% debuff resistance on a cooldown of 6, actually a very nice skill to have. Passive skills is Territory Creation A and Item Construction D. Her third skill is an Anti Avenger Attack Damage Aptitude. Because, actually, funny enough, I think this is actually a trust no one, not even yourself kind of situation. Because, yes, <laughs> later on, there is going to be an Avenger Marie. <laughs> so, trust no one, not even yourself. <laughs> Her noble phantasm is the Crystal Dress. Precious Brilliance Everlasting. Deals damage to all enemies, three hits. It reduces critical attack chance by 20% for three turns. 450% damage at MP level 1, and if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 750%, and then an increase the party's crit damage for 3 turns. 20% crit damage at charge level 1, and then at charge at the final charge level, it's 40%. And that is Marie Antoinette Caster, or aka Marie Summer. How is she? She's kind of bad. Uh, she's a very bad unit. She is not very good. She's not very good in terms of farming, because she only hits three times, so she doesn't have enough time to build up MP gain. Her invincibility is nice, but it doesn't really serve anything, because why are you defending her? She's not really supporting her all that much. 10 crit stars is nice, and her HP is nice, but it's not that great. Um, party attack is a weird 19.5%, and yeah, if you whiff her, and you have her on a team of a bunch of dudes... Their crit star generation rate is increased by 41%, but again, that's really not anything. It's really not much. <laughs> not much of anything. And this attack itself, in theory, sounds cool because you can increase the party's crit damage if you can continue. If you could have continuously looped this, you could have constantly given them crit damage, and then by the third turn, you would have a potential 60% crit to foes. That never happens, though. And I can say that as someone with MP4, she just doesn't do that much damage. She's very weak in terms of damage because she's a caster that released during the early parts of the game. So she just isn't very good, which is kind of a shame. Um, the reason I want my final copy of her is because I have a long sorted history with Summer Marie and I want to kind of finish the story on that one by getting her MP5. But for the most part... Uh, on this Da Vinci banner, she's gonna be a, oh man, that could have been Da Vinci type of servant, which is very sad, but it is what it is. I really hope that they buff her at some point, because I do think that this skill is, like, pretty decent for uh, invincibility for three attacks. That's not bad. It's just that her other two skills are too old at this point. She's really nice to look at, though. Look at that crab. It's a nice looking crab. Very cool crab. Sundress. Bikini. Not as good as the crab, though. Crab top tier. And I think the crab is in her sprite. Yeah. Top tier crab. Is what I'll say. 
Someone for the crab. That's Marie Caster. And now, finally, Leonardo da Vinci. And also, that Marie is limited. Um, da Vinci. The original Vinci. The original uh, da Vinci that was a, I believe, an anniversary unit, if I remember correctly. Yes. She was. And first year, right? Yes. All right. Um, Leonardo da Vinci Caster. One quick, three arts, one buster. Her first skill, which is after a uh, strengthening, just to check to see if this is in the game at the moment, after the Fago Arcade pre-release campaign. So that means it is not in game yet, but it's going to be coming up um, next year or uh, in 2025. The sa sa Sagacious Wisdom? Sure, let's go with that. Sa Sage Asus? Saga Aceus. Sagacious Wisdom? Hold up. Because people always make fun of me and say how how to say Sagacious. Alright. Sagacious. Sagacious. Yeah, the Sagacious. It's apparently, according to Google, if you... <laughs> If you don't trust me, then feel free to yell at Google on that one. Overcharges one ally's MP by two stages for one time, three turns. Increases their defense for three turns. Increases their MP damage for three turns. Grants them a gut stats for one time, three turns. The defense up is 30%. The MP damage is 30%. And the revised with HP is 3,000. And a cooldown of 5. And the way it's going to be for us on NA for a while is going to be an 85% chance that this is an extreme improvement. 85% chance to increase on defense for three turns. 85% chance to increase own MP damage for one turn. Grant self gut stats for one time three turns. Defense is 30%. MP damage is 30%. And yeah, the, the revival of HP is 3,000 still. On a cooldown of five. Uh, it gets much better. You just gotta wait a bit. Second skill is... This one's in the game already. Golden Rule Body a, uh, B, Mona Lisa, A+. Plus. It replaces the Golden Rule Body B with the Mona Lisa, A+. Plus. At least I'm pretty sure that this is already in game. Let me double check again. Yes, Slapstick Museum. Mona Lisa grants self the debuff immunity for two turns. Recovers own HP every turn for three turns. Charges own parties, uh, charges own MP gauge by 10% every turn for three turns. Increases party's art performance for three turns. HP regen is 1,000 and the arts up is 20% on the cooldown of six. Her third skill is the Pioneer of the Stars EX. Charges own MP gauge and uh, ignores invincibility for three turns and then gains crit stars 50% MP up and cooldown is six. Her passive skills are Territory Creation A and Item Construction A. A pen skill for the third one is an Anti-Alter Ego Damage Attack Damage Aptitude. Because I guess she just really hates them. And after Interlude 2, her Noble Phantasm is the Omu Universal, the Universal Man. Anti-Unit, Anti-Army, Rank EX, hits a single time. Deals damage and its arts. Deals damage that ignores defensive buffs to all enemies and then reduces their critical attack chance by 30% for 3 turns. The damage up is 600% at MP level 1. If you get it to MP level 5, it's a 9,000. Uh, 9, 900%. Um, increases zone MP damage for one turn. Activates first. Charge um, 30% uh, MP damage at charge level 1. And if you get it to the final charge level, it's 70% MP damage. Which is kind of insane. And yet, yeah, that's Da Vinci. Um... I believe Da Vinci's really good, from what I've heard. Um, unfortunately, I've never been able to get Da Vinci. I keep thinking that the one turn thing is going to be... The one hit only on the arts card is bad. Because um, typically when you are um, trying to loop or something, it's pretty bad to kind of have that. But to be fair, she's not really... I mean, she's probably built for... I think she probably can. Let me see. If you have 50% on on your end, on your third skill, you should be able to NP loop, even if you are not getting that much crazy gains from just a single uh, damage done by your NP. Um, you can kind of get carried a lot by that. I don't know enough about that just because I don't own the unit, but I can say that if you're in a scenario where you actually fight a bunch of dudes, she'd be very helpful. The fact that this can be targeted and this can also be given to her... Uh, the overcharge increase of NP damage by two stages is pretty crazy, because that would mean if you use it on her, you're getting 50% NP damage from her NP. But, 
if you're also in a challenge quest type scenario, you can also just put this on Castoria, and Castoria would then get the two overcharge thing, and then you'd get two of her little um, shield thingy, and that makes her very good. I think Da Vinci is probably a very solid unit, um, based on what she has. Um, she's definitely more built for kind of these challenge challenge quest type fights or story fights than I think looping. Not to say that I think there wouldn't be a way to figure out how to loop with her. Um, I think it'd probably be pretty simple to figure out a way to do it if you cared about it that much. Um, but at the same time, looping isn't everything. And sometimes you can literally just, like I said, use her in very interesting ways in like challenge quest type fights. And it ends up being pretty fun. And I think that's good enough for a unit. I think that's good enough for a caster. And especially an old one at that. I just literally looked at Marie and I think Marie released around the same time as Da Vinci? Around the same time? But you see the difference is that Da Vinci has actually been upgraded over time. Like any of these that were maybe okay at the start of the game and now are bad, they've improved it. Like in the start of the game, giving defense like this and giving MP damage was considered pretty good. But nowadays it's like, yeah, who gives a shit? Just give them it for three turns. We have literal units who are gods destroying the game. It's okay for this skill to be better now. This is what it looks like to actually have legitimately like uh, legitimate backup in terms of what you're doing. Um... So yeah, I think Da Vinci is really good. This is another unit of mine that I wish I had. And honestly, I feel like maybe kind of going for one multi on this one. Hmm, I don't know. It's very tough just because... Thankfully, I already have Castoria, so I don't have to worry about Castoria. Um, I also already have Tomomo, so I don't really have to worry about Tomomo at all. <laughs> It would be nice to have all the anniversary servants, you're right. But I would still be missing Sherlock Holmes at that point. I'm still gonna go for Sherlock Holmes with Yeah, that's that's definitely a thing that sounds like you would do. Um Yeah. I think in terms of the player, like even I'm here debating it, you have to look at what's coming up and how badly do you want the units that are coming up which for me i think the big unit that's coming up that i badly want is actually funny enough a four star <laughs> who's going to be coming with um after i do kind of like constantine and the way the way he carries himself but i don't think that's enough for me to kind of actually go for him because unfortunately he's just in, in a weird place um mm, do you want, does he come with Roland? It's the same banner. No, not Constantine. Yeah, I was about to say, Constantine's by himself. Yeah, the, the Charlemagne banner. Um, this is the next one I'm actually going to be summoning for. Um, which will feature Charlemagne, Kremhold, and Roland. And it's not like I would be sad if I got one of them. I would be pretty happy. But my definite focus here is Krem, Kremhild. Um, that's the one I would actually legitimately want out of these. And I'll say, after that cut, mysterious person featured here that I'm gonna avoid spoilers for. And then cut back to regular. And yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking at. And that's kind of what I'm... I have. That's the thing I have to wrestle in my mind. And I think it's gonna come down to when I see that banner. Is when I'll decide whether or not I'm gonna throw a single multi at it or not. Mmm... We'll see. But I do think Da Vinci's really good, and in, even if she was bad, it's Da Vinci. Who doesn't like Da Vinci? She did so much for us. <laughs> well, all that's getting cut. So, <laughs> the point is, um, I like Da Vinci. And that's good enough. I think that's a good enough reason to summon for Da Vinci, even if I didn't think that she had very good things. If anything, if she was a bad unit, it's something that you could go like, uh, maybe that's why I don't summon for it. But now, nah, she actually is pretty solid as far as I can tell. Anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Uh, best of luck if you do end up summoning. Again, I don't think... Unfortunately, she's releasing a really weird time on NA. Because most people are just summoning for Castoria. <laughs> and if for whatever reason you're not summoning Castoria, maybe you're trying for Tomomo. Because you're just a huge Tomomo fan. And you're like, I need my NP6 copy. This is where I get my pity break Tomomo, and I break everything. Who knows? 
I did. You you never know when it comes to Fago. I think someone most recently said, "I can't wait to use my four star ticket on a Stealthful Rider. I love him. He's a bro." And I'm like, "Hell yeah, do you <laughs> live your truth?" But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Say goodbye, boy. Goodbye.